Welcome back to Ask an Innovator. I'm here with Lisa Lacko. I have some questions for Lisa about ask, asking questions. I was reading on the internet a little bit about good question asking. Here's a couple things that I, I, I came across. What are you most proud of? Uh, what was one of the most defining things in your career? How did you choose your compression, your, your, your profession, excuse me? How do you decompress? Um, what questions do you like to ask your guests to get into their, into their mind? Um, I like the one, how did that make you feel? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a powerful question because you're asking them to bring out their emotions mm. and you're allowing them to be vulnerable if necessary, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's a really powerful question. Mm. Another time, other questions, like they're, they're, they're very simple, simple processes. Like if I'm looking at you and I know that you've got more you want to tell me about that story. Like there's, okay, I, I, I went to the restaurant this morning and opened the door and, uh, and so began another day. Um, well, okay, that's very exciting, Cole. Let's take that a step further. So what happened when you opened the door? Who was there? What did mm -hmm. you see? Get, get you to start describing and feeling. And once you start telling that story, you're back there. Mm. And I can see that in your face and I can just keep pushing you a little tiny bit every now and then and you'll tell me more of the story. Mm. So that's, but I have to pay attention to you. I have to watch your eyes mm. and I have to listen to every word because you, you, you pick up, and I don't know how to describe it, but you pick up something that you know that's the place to go. Is it almost second nature it for all, you now? Not so much second nature um, because everybody's so different. I mean, people come in and they're absolutely terrified in the studio mm. and you think, this is going to be awful. They're going to be monosyllabic. And they mm. will be the people who have the most incredible stories to tell. Mm. And <laughs> you have no idea that it's going to come out, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, that's exciting. Mm. After 25 years of being a professional question asker, when you're not at work and you're out, uh, you're at a social event, a family event, do you find that you separate uh, question asking at work from, are you still inquisitive in your, in your personal still, life? Yeah, Do you still yeah. dive deep Ask into Ask my it? kids. Right, okay, <laughs> sure. They have learned the art of evasion. <laughs> right, they know it's coming. My older son especially <laughs> used to say, Mom, I know you're coming at me with those questions now. Um, I think I'm naturally curious anyway, and I know quite often if you're with a crowd, or if you're at a social event or something like that, the easiest thing to do to break the ice is to ask a question, mm. and then it goes from there, right? And then the person that you're talking to feels like, well, their answer is worth something. I'm not just saying, how are you? I'm asking, you know, uh, what, what brought you to this event? How are you connected? Uh, tell me about this friend over here. So if you're asking questions that make them answer, mm. that makes a big difference. To be a good entrepreneur or to be a good innovator, it's often said that you need to be a good listener. Yes. Do you feel as though being a good question asker makes you a better listener. You have to, because mm. otherwise I could ask the same question. Otherwise you could say something brilliant and I'll miss it. Mm. I mean, would that be awful? It would be awful. Yeah. Yeah. In one ear, out uh, the, the other. other. And that happens. I mean, I've seen that happen in interviews quite often that the person is looking at their script and not paying any attention to what your guest is telling you. And your guest could be sitting there with tears streaming down their eyes, having this life-changing experience. And all you're doing is formulating your nef next question. Right, major disconnect. No, it is, yeah, totally. Yeah. You mentioned a really important word. Uh, it's a word that I've always wanted to bring into this show and I try and bring it up uh, if the guests allow. And you, you said the V word, which is vulnerable. Uh, it's a very powerful word. It is. Can you talk a little bit about vulnerability? Um, there are so many interviews over the years that I've done um, where there's a vulnerable aspect to the story. And if you allow your guest to share that experience, if they trust you, they have to trust you to share that experience. Mm. Um, I have done everything in the studio. I've reached across and I've held people's hands mm. while they're telling me a story. I've cried with them. I, you know, I cry on the drop of a hat. <laughs> uh, but Truly vulnerable. Yeah, but no, it, yeah. it's, um, you're allowing, you're giving them license to express their emotions. Because sometimes the stuff is so powerful. Recently, I did, we did one of our pop-up shows and we went to the Legion and it was the Port Arthur Legion, a very, you know, like tucked away little place. And so we're talking about Legion kind of things. Two of my guests that morning were suffering from PTSD, mm. from Bosnia, their experiences in Bosnia. Mm. And 
they both went there and they both openly talked about that. They weren't quite prepared for it. They didn't, um, they didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. But by allowing them to talk about it, I think was therapeutic for all of us. And mm. it was really healthy, I think, uh, for the audience to hear that. Like mm. the, the Legion is more than what we think about it from World War II. These are guys coming back and, and women coming back from Afghanistan and uh, Bosnia, as it turns out, for these people in Africa. Mm. And they've had incredible experiences that they're having a difficult time processing. And so I think that, that was, I think that made for really good radio. Mm. And they felt good about saying it because it validated their feelings. Yeah, and you know, and it makes f for such great TV as well because as we sit here today on November 9th, yeah. in two days from now, we celebrate Remembrance Day. Yes. What a, a beautiful homage to It stayed with me for the troops. last couple of weeks. Yeah. It really has because um, because we forget, we do forget, mm. we, and given that it's such a tight, a, a tight connection to World War II, they're today, they're our, they're our neighbors. There's a guy in the basement three doors down who's afraid to come out mm -hmm. uh, with PTSD, right? So. When you have experiences like this and you're interviewing people on such an intimate level, yeah. are you able to leave work at work? When you, when you go home, do you, do you carry some You know what it does? It makes you more compassionate. Mm. It makes you realize that, uh, like, I know Thunder Bay pretty well now, warts and all, celebrations <laughs> and warts. Uh, and I know how much the city needs, like, yeah, so it makes me a better person. Take it home, yeah, but I think it, it, it makes me a better person. Sure, and that's really all that we can really bank on. Yeah, yeah. Working on ourselves is a great way to positively affect other people. Yeah, and I mean, and then it makes my job, it, it makes my job even more important in making sure people can tell their stories, right? Yeah, yeah that's uh, absolutely amazing. Um, the, um, one of the best question askers that uh, I remember growing up was uh, a uh, indirect colleague of yours, I guess, and someone that you've met, which was uh, Peter Zosky. Yes. From the- uh, Wasn't he the best? The CBC. Yeah. Yeah, I, I grew up listening to Peter Zosky, and I think uh, once we come back from the break, um, I'm gonna get you to share sure. with us a little Peter Zosky. I'll tell you the Peter Zosky story. A Peter Zosky okay. story, which is, uh, he's a you know, great Canadian broadcaster. Okay. Stay with us. Lisa's gonna share a fun story about a iconic uh, uh, Canadian broadcaster, Peter Zosky. Be right back. <laughs> 